This machine is infected with an SSH worm. If a user logs in to another host, the worm will intercept the connection and record the password. The worst part is, it will also infect the destination host. In this video, I will show you how this worm can hijack user credentials and self-replicate by intercepting outgoing SSH connections. This worm is called SSHIT. It is an autonomous worm that intercepts outgoing connections every time a user uses SSH. So this is how it works. Let's say we have a network of computers. If one of them got compromised, an attacker can install the worm inside the computer. Let's say John connects to Mary's PC via SSH. The worm installed inside John's laptop will intercept that connection and record the password. After that, the worm will now install itself inside Mary's PC. This is where the self-replication happens. So when Mary tries to connect to Alex's computer, the worm will also intercept that connection and record the password. And as usual, it will again install itself inside the destination machine. In the end, we will have a network of infected computers with compromised credentials. Now, let's try this tool. Let's say the first host that was compromised is the personal box machine. There are different ways on how hackers can compromise a system, so we will not discuss them here. But as an example, it can be via phishing attacks or an attacker was able to get into the host through a vulnerability. So to install the worm, an attacker will run this command. This will download the files from this site. This tool is created by the Hacker's Choice, which is a group of very talented individuals. They are also the creators of the popular Hydra tool, which is used for brute forcing and password spraying attacks. So let's give the credit to them. Anyway, let's run this and see what will happen. It installed files inside this PRNG directory. Then it updated the user profile settings. And it says that the log files will be found in a hidden directory under PRNG. It also mentioned that the worm will be activated on the next login. Let's see what is inside the installation directory. There are a bunch of shell scripts and binaries for different platforms. And let's check also what is the settings it put under the user profile. It is sourcing a semi-obfuscated script at the top. This may be the reason why the worm will be activated during the next user login, because it needs to source additional scripts. So I will refresh my session so we can run the worm. To activate it, let's try to log in via SSH to another box. Worms are designed to be stealthy. That's why the user will not notice anything unusual. But if we go to the original machine and inspect the logs files, we will see that it was able to intercept the outgoing connection. The session input will show us anything the user typed, such as passwords. Then the next log file will contain the command outputs. From here, attacker can now gather this files by sending to his own machine. The more people using SSH means more credentials will be harvested since the worm will also install itself inside the target. So this tool is specifically designed against network of Linux machines. If we want to confirm if the worm is activated, we can enable this verbose settings. It will show you that any command past this point will be intercepted and recorded. Let's have a quick look on how the worm works. The entry point is inside the user profile. It injected a script here that will be executed during login. If we decode this script, it points to the seed file. Let's open it. At the top, it sets the base directory to the location where the worm is installed. Then it makes sure the verbose setting is off so the user will not detect the worm. There is also another setting here which looks like a dry run flag, then followed by another set of exported settings. It also removed any alias to which command. I guess because it wants the user to use this specially crafted alias function. The main function inside this seed script is called THC set one. Inside that, it unsets the SSH and sudo functions. Let's say we have a function called A. Inside this function, we will just echo a random sentence. To run that function, we will just call it in our current shell. To deactivate that function, we will call unset dash FA. If we try to call again the function, it now fails. So, this is what it tries to do here. It makes sure that any built-in functions for SSH and sudo are removed because it wants the victim to use its malicious functions below. For the purpose of this discussion, let's focus only on the SSH function. It first checks if the SSH file inside the worm installation directory is present. This may be one way of checking if the worm is properly installed or not. 
There may be cases where the worm will not be successful in installing itself, like for example, if it doesn't have the necessary binaries for the target architecture. If it is present, it will put the original SSH binary path inside the THC target variable. Then it runs that file it was looking for at the start of this conditional statement. It then passed the target IP address or host name to that file. If it cannot find that file, then it will just use the standard SSH binary. The question is, what is this file? It is a symbolic link to PTY spy binary. It is an ELF64 bit executable file, meaning it is compiled. We can quickly inspect the strings inside the binary, but there are better ways to reverse engineer this. Looking inside their GitHub repositories, I found this one, which most likely contains the source code. Not sure though, if this is the latest one, but doing a quick view, the main interception logic is located in this file. It runs two SSH process in parallel. The first one is a stealth SSH connection that backdoors the remote system. The second one is the real SSH for normal user connection. It captures the password by monitoring the PTY IO for password prompts. Then it records the output to the log directories we saw a while ago. This is just a simple overview on how it works, but there are a lot more going on under the hood. As we see in this video, worms are designed to be stealthy and being able to compromise several machines through self-replication. If you want to see more videos about worms, let me know in the comment below. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.